<clears throat> Hello everyone. Okay, <clears throat> I will start right now. Uh, so, uh, right now we're going to do the diabetic and alcoholic food examinations. We are left with um, Let's find Dr. Yasmin, it's fine. Let's find Dr. Yasmin. You can take your time, take your time. Okay, so for today, we are left with the cranial nerves, diabetic and alcoholic food, and uh, the antenatal examination and thyroid as well. And the visual feed examination. Okay. And reactive arthritis. So, um, let's start with the diabetic and alcoholic food. Dr. Uh, Bina, are you here? Hello. Hello, Dr. Bina. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Zero. Okay, that's great. Uh, if you cannot do that, it's fine. Take your time. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm fine. Okay. So, Dr. Bina, tell me, uh, in the diabetic food, actually, I will tell you the finding, okay? In the diabetic food, okay. you'll find that the patient is coming uh, with uh, some, uh, he's coming for diabetic review, okay? And okay. Um, you, you are, you are. What, what, what will be your approach in the diabetic review, simply? Uh, I would elaborate diabetes, first of all. Perfect, perfect. Where? When was it diagnosed and all the other questions? Hmm? Uh, you want me to say all those questions? When what is when was no, no, diagnosed? No, 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 How is no, it being managed? No, 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 okay. it's fine, it's fine. Just you will avoid diabetes and what else you will pick up? Yes. I mean now move to the past medical history, right? Yes. What will you ask in the past medical history? I need to be selective. Uh okay. Um Q one? How has your health been recently? Sorry, Q2, that is. Okay. Uh, any fever, any illness? And then Q3, okay. hypertension, any heart disease, any kidney disease. What else? Um, Family history. Life, lifestyle. Here, the most important is the lifestyle of Turbina. Yes, lifestyle, yes, of course. <clears throat> okay. Now, do the examination. Which examination are you going to do? Um, vitals. Mm -hmm. General physical examination, including BMI. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, Uploads. And neurological examination. Okay. Now do the neurologic, neurological examination. Wait. Stop here. I will tell you. Okay? Okay. You can mute yourself. So okay. in the neurological Thank examination, you. you're welcome. This will be a, Thank you for sharing. So here you are going to start the diabetic food examination. How we do that? You simply do an inspection, palpation, and one portion of the sensation, which is a fine touch, or ultimately pain as well. So again, inspection, palpation, sensation, fine touch, and pain only. And if even if you don't have time to perform the pain, it's fine, because usually the pain sensation follows the fine touch. Okay, so inspection, you are going to do an inspection. You look at the leg. For example, let's. Uh, Let's demonstrate it. You are going to look at the leg you are commenting on. I can see there is no skin changes, no swelling, no scar, no abnormal pigmentation, no shiny skin as well. You will say the whole comment. No venous, no, 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 no the liquid nutritious veins. And you are going to look at the foot as well, in the dorsum of the foot. As again, the same thing, no pigments. Um, and in the, in the two, you have to comment on the amputee, if there are any amputated two. Is there any fungal infection between the two? Is there any ingrown two nails? You have to comment also as hard corns, hard corns and ulcers, especially in the sole of the foot. Is there any ulcers or hard corns? Why? Usually developed due to loss of sensation and frequent irritation. So when he is pricking, but he is pricked by something, he doesn't feel it. So this on the long run can cause some injury and some ulcers. So how to cause some ulcers, we have to comment on them. Okay. You are going also to ask the patient to raise his, his leg, to see the back of the leg. Okay. 
and the same thing for the other leg. Why we raise the best back of the leg to see if there is any redness or swelling, which are signs of DVT, or any wasting in the calf muscle. This is an inspection. On the palpation, we usually do three things, four things. Number one, temperature. Number two, tenderness. Number four, uh, number four, the touch. Uh, sorry, temperature, tenderness, and after that, the touch itself. The touch, which is sort of a neurological examination and pulsations. So for the temperature, simply I, 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 I palpate with the dorsum of my hand. And after the palpating with the dorsum of my hand, I'm going to feel the tenderness. For the tenderness, I'm simply placing my hands along the legs while looking at the patient's face. Very important is to see the distal pulse. Distal pulses are either the salad fetus, either the posterior tibial, either the anterior tibial, and the popliteal. You have to measure, and then most probably you'll find that the posterior tibia, uh, sorry, you'll find that the recited piece is present in both sides. By the way, all the examinations are to be done in both sides. But whenever you are assessing tenderness, please, whenever you are assessing tenderness in any examination, you have to do it one side or one time. Do not do both sides at the same time at all. Otherwise, you will never know where the pain is coming from. Okay, so right now we are going later on to uh, that sensation or the touch sensation. For the touch, the fine touch and the pain sensation. Give me one minute, guys. Okay. Okay, so guys, um, now you're doing the fine touch. Do it one side at one time. Um, after that, you are going to do the pain sensation if there's any time left. What to do? You will disclose to the, uh, by the way, after doing the examinations, Dr. Muniba, tell me what's the next step? Hello? Yeah, hello. Yes, after the examination, we would uh, disclose our finding to the patient mm. and, or the examiner, depending upon the. Mm, 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 mm. So, you are telling me that in the diabetic review, you are not going to measure the blood sugar? No, no, definitely blood sugar. You are not I going mean, to measure the HB1AC? Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me scold you <laughs> because I'm seriously pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, listen, my, I thought that, uh, I mean, usually after the examination, we move to the patient, disclose it, and then the investigation. I always say, no, 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 wait. I always say after the examination, you have at least to say I'm going to do some investigations, at least. Say okay. It. Which Okay, I'm going to check you your blood sugar level and uh, HB1C. Okay, you'll find the HB1 and AC is high and the blood sugar level is high, and sometimes the steer is high as well. 
So what okay. I'm going to say to the patient, your blood, your blood sugar or your diabetes is not well controlled, right? Controlled. Why? Yes. Well, it depends on the task. Sometimes the patient is not compliant with the uh, diabetic medication and has uh, not exactly. taking well balanced diet. Exactly. But you know, I always say that you always say the reason from the history, from the examination and from the investigations. And when he asks you why it is not well controlled after that, you will say because you are not taking proper diet or because you are not taking medication. Anymore. I mean, here you, uh, you are saying it's not well controlled and then you explain yourself why did you find it not well controlled. I mean, you speak about yourself first. Why did you find it well, not well controlled? Because from your history and from examination and from investigations. After that, when he asks you, Dr. White, all this happened to me, now we will tell him that you are not following proper diet or you are not taking medication regularly. It depends on the history. Is that my point? Right. right you have right. to verbalize your findings okay. here. Uh, by the I way, got the station in my exam. I got the station. And uh, the findings were given in the task. Well, the uh, investigations were given in the task about the retinopathy changes and the nephropathy. Yeah, this was a combined one? It was a combined station. Okay, so they were giving you the findings in the task? Yeah. Okay, so you will tell him that from my examination and from your notes, I could find that there is, for example, some change in your. That your diabetes is not, yeah, yes. the diabetes is not well controlled. It is affecting your eyes and the kidney and your foot. Yes, exactly. Okay, so uh, Dr. Muniba, how to control this condition? It can be controlled with the lifestyle changes. Dr. Muniba. There are some things that we can do and some other things we, we can, can do, do and some things, yes. <laughs> and what the wrong. patient... Sorry, so I care myself patient. right now, Dr. Muniba? No, no, no. I'll explain, sorry. Okay. Uh, what the patient can do is to have a well-balanced, healthy diet. Okay, so and, life uh, changes. Uh, life changes. Lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes, yes. And uh, medicine, compliance with the medicine. And what we can do... Uh, we can uh, do regular checkups of uh, blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, regular follow-ups of the patient. Okay, thank you. And we can also review his medication, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. This is diabetic food. What about what about the alcoholic food, Doctor Moniza? Um, in the alcoholic food, we will again take the history and uh, we'll move on to the examination. Here, the neurological part is more important, I guess, for the fine touch and the pain. Very good. So, you know what? Please write in your uh, write please in your um, in your notes, guys. And that here in the alcoholic food, by the way, the guy will be presented by some pain or some burning in his legs, pain or burning in his legs. Okay. So the pain and or burning in his legs, we need to ask some uh, questions like some neurological questions do you have any weakness any fingering or numbness okay uh, there is no too much disease only neurological symptoms only uh, and uh, ask about the lifestyle very important here to ask about the lifestyle do you know which question is important in the lifestyle dr Moiba? one question uh, about the uh, alcohol habit e exactly uh, what else i can ask in the lifestyle Uh, we can ask about uh, smoking, job, 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 I guess, since why, the patient why, is alcohol. Why don't you ask I mean, about it, the diet? Yes, yes of course. Exactly, oh, yes, uh, that, yes, mean. Diet, diet is very important. You know why? Because the alcohol interferes with vitamin B12. Yes. Okay, okay so you need to ask about this. Okay. Especially if he is not having enough diet, this may worsen the condition. The vitamin B12 will be deficient. So, uh, which examination okay. to do? I will tell you. You will do the uh, neurological examination of the lower limb. What's very important is that you will, uh, you know, you'll be very brief in the inspection, like maybe half a minute in the inspection, just 30 seconds in the inspection. Don't say too much in details. Just say, for example, I cannot see any skin changes, no, no scar, no stria, nothing like this. Only do not do detailed okay. inspection. 30 seconds inspection. After that, in the palpation, please, in the palpation, start from, uh, you just uh, do the, uh, in the palpation, just do the, uh, just do the temperature. And after the temperature, move to the fine touch directly. 
I mean one for, uh, inspection, very brief inspection. And some even say that you do not need to do palpation. Some people say that you do not need to do palpation at all. So please, in the palpation, just try to all, do only one item in the palpation. Just maybe do the tenderness or do the temperature. Because the important thing here is the neurological examination. If you do not reach it, you will not pass it. So in the neurological examination, you are going to do fine touch and pain sensation in the sensory, right? Right. So fine touch or pain sensation in the sensory. What's next? Then we would move on to the investigations. And the motor. Sorry, in the in the motor examination, we would check for the tone and power. Okay, you pick up two things in the motor examination. I used to pick up maybe the reflexes and the tone. Okay, reflexes are very easy. You know the, the knee and the ankle reflex. You can also pick up the uh, power and the tone. No problem. Just pick two motor. No, no problem, Dr. Okay. Rivera. So uh, you're going to pick two things, Dr. Uh, Muniba. Two sensory fine touch and pain sensation and two things in the motor, which are maybe power and tune or tune and reflexes or tune uh, or power and reflex, whatever you are comfortable with. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm going to tell the patient that um, I could appreciate what? What you what will um, be, uh, sorry, after the intervention, what are going to do? I'm going to do the investigation. Move to the patient. Yes. And uh, now what we will disclose the first order yeah. should we mention the diet? Yeah, okay. No, no, I don't need to see the investigations right now. Just disclose right now. Again, the, uh, you have problem in your foot because of uh, excessive alcohol drinking. Okay, uh, doctor, um, what is this called? Alcoholic foot. Uh, well, yes, yes, it's true. So what are you going to do for me right now, doctor? We're going to run some tests. Which tests? Including uh, checking the vitamin levels in mm -hmm. your body and mm -hmm. in, uh, the vitamin beads and some nerve conduction studies. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so, EMGs. Yeah. Okay, so basically the neurological things. Yes. Okay, neurological things like nerve conduction study, electromyography. But what is the more important thing? You need to do the vitamins. Vitamins are very important. Yes. Vitamin level is very important. Okay. So right. how are you going to and treat the patient? And the routine the blood. Yeah, routine blood, of course. How uh, are you going to treat the patient? Well, here again, there are some things that uh, the patient can do and we can do. Yeah. So you advise, do you advise the patient about... By the way, uh, the, the management here will be discussed with the examiner. So uh, he will tell you, doctor, uh, how will you treat the patient? Or what, what, what are you going to, to do to treat the patient? Uh, we would advise the patient, number one, to stop smoking. Uh, sorry, stop uh, drinking. And uh, we, we can advise him for the vitamin supplements. And since the patient is in pain, so we would uh, move to the pain management. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. So basically, lifestyle change in terms of alcohol, and we can provide him some vitamin supplements, right? And uh, we need also yes. to uh, we need also to bring, give him some pain for painkillers for the pain. Which painkillers here are we going to give him? <clears throat> for the neuropathic pain, we can give thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear from you, because he was having this burning sensation. You know that it is neuropathic pain. So we are going to give gabapentin, gabapentin or amitriptyl, right? Yes. Thank you, Dr. Uh, so, okay. So um, now we are done with diabetic and alcoholic food. Very easy stations, but you, why people stumble on them? Because the people want to perform everything. No, Dr. me. no, you do not check Romberg. You do not check Romberg here in this station. You just, you know, you, need, you, you barely will finish or you will reach the motor examination. You have to reach the motor examination and perform, please, your core here is the motor examination in this station. People here spend too much time on inspection and palpation and they do not reach the motor examination. So you have to be very specific in it. One thing I forgot to tell you that recently, they bring many changes in the diabetic food. They can bring for you 
some changes actually on the real food. We can bring for you real diabetic patients sometimes. So you can say, for example, we can be in growing to nail, we can be some fungal infection, we can be some shiny skin, there can be some, you know, tortious veins. You can find everything. That's why I always tell you that you have to verbalize what you see. Do not verbalize what you learn in your mind. No, just verbalize what you see. Okay. Um, okay, so let's do the cerebellar ataxia right now. Cerebellar ataxia, she is a lady coming because of feeling clumsy in the past few days and problem with the balance. So clumsy and problem in the balance, okay. What are the, okay, I will elaborate each of them. But most important question is that I have to ask, does it come at a specific time of the day or not? I mean, after when did it start? How did it start? Has it changed? Uh, anything makes it better? Anything makes it worse? If this is the fix it. Elaboration or these four or five questions, please ask them in all the stations. Do not be confused. You have to always know. For example, Dr. Bina, you know what to do? I recommend that you repeat them like maybe five times before lunchtime and five times after lunchtime. Okay. And five times before dinner and five times after dinner. Isn't it worth it? Yes. You know, to save at least one or two minutes from your time in the cubicle. Okay. 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 Dr. Manisha, if I tell you I'm having clumsiness and problem with the balance, what will you say to me? Hello. Uh, okay. So, uh, checking patient uh, whether he's comfortable to talk to me or not. Yes, thank you. What else? And uh, tell me more about it. Okay, perfect. She will tell you the full history of this problem. But, doctor, you know, I used to love knitting. I can't do the knitting anymore. Knitting. You know knitting? Yeah. Okay. So, doctor, I can't do this anymore. Can you hear me? Yeah, is that a question? I like. No, no, no. I'm sorry to hear no, no. that. No, 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 no. This is regular attacks here. Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Guys, is my voice interrupting or something? Dr. Manisha? Yes. Manisha. Uh, can you hear me? Like, I'm talking, I don't know whether you can hear me or yeah. not. Yeah, okay. Tell me. Tell me now. So, I'm giving, I'm, I'm having clumsiness and, uh, well, doctor, I'm having clumsiness. You're asking me, tell me more about it. What you want to know, doctor? Uh, when did it start? No, I have a good idea. Clumsy is having many explanations. Mm -hmm. So ask him, okay. you know, what do you mean by clumsy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can, also she told you that she's having problem with balance. You can ask her the same pattern, like when it starts, how it start, how to change, anything makes it different, anything, the same thing, right? Okay. You know, she tells you, I don't, I, I, I can't enjoy anything anymore, doctor. I can't do anything that and that. Huh? Mm -hmm. What will you do? Okay, um, I'm sorry to hear that. And how is it affecting your life? In yeah, way? this is a core of this station, by the way. She's an old lady and she's very nice. And she's very, I mean, she's feeling a little bit, you know, disappointed because of that. So you have to keep reassuring her and show sympathy and empathy to her. Okay, actually, by the way, the people who are having this condition after a long age, you will be having like some low esteem. Uh, I'm not speaking about the mood here. No, it's not the mood. Actually, it is, it is a combined station. You cannot discuss the mood here. But the thing is that please try to show some reassurance and sympathy and empathy from time to time. Dr. Manisha, what are your differentials here quickly? Yeah, so uh, clumsy hands, uh, it can be uh, Parkinsonism. Okay. And uh, maybe uh, multiple sclerosis. Dr. Uh, Manisha, I need you to ask me very concise questions which are very common for plateau. Like, for example, ask me as FY2, how would you ask about multiple sclerosis in plateau? You don't, you, don't have yeah. yet, you don't have any other problem apart from clumsiness and balance problem yet. So simply ask me, do you have any weakness on one side of the body or any mm -hmm. side of the body? Do you have any problem with the sensation? 
what are these problems the other neurological problems right yeah so the number one no. number two it's not... sol mm -hmm. why don't you ask about sol why don't you ask about any infection because this is the reason of confusion or constant sometimes and you know another reason as well is constipation so constipation infection and sol are very enough here and move to the lifestyle after the pmh i mean just be very brief in the pmh but now move to the lifestyle i need two or three questions importantly in the lifestyle um or do you drink alcohol okay good what else uh, diet why um, because uh, some uh, vitamin deficiencies can cause thank you vitamin thank you thank you so much thank you seriously so alcohol diet are very important also smoking can lead to many cancers so do the examinations let me speak about the examinations right now quickly and cerebellar attacks of station we're going to tell the patient i'm going to examine the parts of your brain responsible for maintaining balance and coordination i'm going to ask you to do some movements and repeat some phrases after me if you feel any discomfort at any point, please do let me know. I ensure privacy and you'll be having a chat room. Please bear with me. So shall I proceed? Yes, Dr. Okay, thank you. Now you'll start the patient, you will tell him to say three phrases after you, which are baby hippopotamus, British Constitution, 42 West Register Street. Learn these three phrases. After that, I'm going to ask, these are the, regarding the mouth. And with the mouth of the speech. Now we have to do some things with the hand. What we do with the hand? I'm going to ask the patient to stretch his arms. Stretch his arms. See if there's any tremors or not. I'm going also to ask the patient to like clap his hands over each other. How to clap like one side and then the other side very quickly as fast as possible. Okay. This is we call, after that, we are going to say that there is no this diadical kinesia. This, the diadical kinesia. Okay, so this diadical kinesia. Okay, so after that, what we are going to do, we are going to test. Now we did one thing with the hand which is a clapping or this electrical kinesia, I need also to test the uh, intention tremors with the hand. So I'm going to ask the patient to touch the tip of his nose and follow my finger as fast as possible. Okay, no intention tremors. I have to comment after each thing. We finish the hand. So two, sorry, two things only with the hand. Do not do the tremors. Just do the intention tremors and do the this electrical kinesia. Intention tremors and this dedicated kinesia are very enough. Now move to the eye. How to test the eye here? I'm going to test for the nystagmus. Okay, vertical and horizontal nystagmus. Vertical and horizontal nystagmus, very enough. After the nystagmus, I'm going to ask the patient to stand up. Are you able to stand up? Okay, he's able to stand up. Take few, close the eyes. Close the eyes here is for the Romberg sign. Close the eyes for the Romberg sign while standing up. And usually it is negative Romberg. I mean, there is no problem here. Then ask the patient to open the eyes, take few steps, and, and please support him from the side. Pretend that you are supporting him. And then after that, let him ask, or ask him to walk. Take few steps back and forth. No abnormality in the gait. Then ask the patient to do the heel to the heel to chin, uh, sorry to to uh, to do the um, to, to walk on a straight line. Tandem gait. Walk on a straight line with his heel sticking to his toes. With the heel of one side sticking to the toes or the foot of the other side. Back and forth. Why there is no abnormality in tandem gait? Okay, if you have time, you can do the heel to chin test. 
asking the patient to slide his leg over the other foot or his foot sorry, over the other leg. Okay, now I can say that if the examinations are normal. Actually, she has been referred by GP. So I'm going to disclose to her, actually have been referred by your GP because he was suspecting a condition in post regular ataxia. Abnormality in the part of the brain, maintaining balance and coordination. However, from my assessment, everything was normal. So what are you going to do for me right now, doctor? We are going right now to, to refer you to specialist. For first of all, we are going to do some blood tests to you, like routine blood and urine, and ECG as well. After that, we are going to refer you to specialists to perform further scans. Which scan? We are going to refer you to the GP, to, to the uh, special, let's say specialists who will perform some CT or MRI. Doctor, is it cancer? May yeah, I know why? Uh, because I'm worried, doctor. Okay, just say that I, we need to do further investigations. You don't have symptoms suggestive of cancer, so we need to do further investigations to confirm. So she doesn't have any other symptoms suggestive of cancer. So we need to do further investigation to find out the cause. Okay. One last thing is that, you know, she is having clumsiness. Would you like to send her home like this? She can go home, but there is a very important thing is that we can provide her with basic therapist to talk about the movement we must explore your home conditions. Very important to explore your home conditions by sending occupational therapist. So please speak in the end of the session about the physical therapist and the occupational therapist because she is feeling she's having some balance problem and she can have a fall at any time. Okay, next station is antenatal examination and it has been changed recently. It comes as cephalic presentation recently sometimes. Generally, in the antenatal examination, if it's breach or cephalic, she is coming for the antenatal review. In the antenatal review, I ask about the pregnancy questions exactly from the OBG stations. Then I'm going to examine your tummy for your well-being and your baby well-being as well. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to examine here. I'm going to expose here. Whenever you are moving to the mannequin, please ask the examiner about where is the foot end. Ask him where is the foot end of my patient. Why? Because you need to start from the foot. If you expose the patient from the breast side, this is inappropriate. You have always to examine or use, you have to expose from the foot end of the patient. So expose from the foot end and move to the tummy, inspection, palpation. Here the palpation is starting with temperature. Please do not forget the temperature. Of course, people forget the temperature here. After that, superficial palpation, please do it as cheap superficial. But the problem is in the deep palpation. Deep palpation will be in the form of grips here, not in the form of rolling. No, it is grips here. Fundal grip, pelvic grip, and lateral grips. So on the right lateral grip, you will feel, for example, you will feel whatever you feel. Okay, let me demonstrate to you how it feels. The head, I will say round, hard, globular structure. Round, hard, globular structure. This is for the head. And for the limbs, irregular structures. Seem to be extreme uh, limbs. And for the back, curved, soft structure. And for uh, for the breech, for the bottom of the baby, I would say, I would say soft, round structure seem to be uh, the baby bottom. Okay. So, um, here in this case, simply you have to describe whatever you feel. This is a problem. That's why you always have to train yourself on the mannequins in your academy. Try to learn how the head feels, how the bottom feels, how the back feels, and how the extremities or how the limbs feel. Please. And after that, you will measure sensu fundal height. When measuring sensu fundal height, uh, sorry, you will have sorry, to, to, to do the 
a fundal grip. You do the fundal grip and the pelvic grip. In the fundal grip or the pelvic grip, you will find the head or the bottom in any of them. It depends on the presentation. This is the most important thing because the fundal and pelvic grip will determine the presentation. After that, you will do simpsis to fundal height from simpsis pubis to the fundus. From simpsis pubis to the fundus. Okay? Like we always do it with a meter. Measuring tape. What else? After that, we are going to do the uh, auscultation using the petoscopy. Renal petoscope. How to do that? You will place it definitely just a few millimeters above the shoulder. Usually some people say in the back, okay? Sorry, but uh, sorry, uh, some people say in the back, I usually prefer like in the shoulder, I mean in the place where you are expecting the shoulders. By the way, it will be very audible. After that, uh, you're going to say the comment, like for example, number one, number of feet is single, number two, presentation, is cephalic or breach, depends on the day. And number three, you're also going to say since your fundal height is exactly, uh, for example, 36 centimeters, which corresponds to this gestational age. And after that, I'm going to also say um, the lie. The lie usually is, uh, is longitudinal lie. And the liquid volume is adequate and the fetal heart rate is regular. Ideally, I would hear for one minute. Okay, now you tell here, for example, if the presentation is breech, the breech presentation, the baby bottom comes first. What is the solution here? Usually it can turn around on its own. I mean, it can be resolved on its own. However, if it just doesn't happen, we can try something we call external cephalic version. We press over the tummy, try to rotate it back again after applying something to, uh, to relax that, that smooth muscles of the tummy. What if it didn't manage? We can try it twice. But what if it didn't manage? We can go for surgery injection. It's very simple. Why the breach presentation happens? Due to sometimes, due to, for example, excessive liquid volume, due to some problem in the placenta, and due to maybe multiple number of weeks. But it is safe, and the baby will be monitored during the delivery and after being born. What if cephalic? Cephalic, by the way, she is having problem. Cephalic is the opposite. The lady or the woman or the mother was having breach in the previous antenatal, but the doctor advised her to come now and you examine it and you find the cephalic. So it turned back cephalic again. So you will reassure her and she will ask you the same question. Why did the breach happen? And what is the presentation right now? By the way, if she has given born, if she has given birth naturally or near vaginal delivery before, and the presentation is cephalic right now, this means that she can go under vaginal delivery. I mean, there is no problem to do vaginal delivery to her. And there is no complications. Okay, this is regarding the antenatal. Then let's do the thyroid examination. Thyroid is coming right now either as, um, it's coming either as um, a teaching station or combined station. In the combined station, simply the thyroid review and the teaching station as well. The only difference is that in the teaching station, you have to verbalize your findings loud. Why? Because there will be, there will be a student following you. The student is sitting beside you just to observe you while doing the examination. So you'll be just saying, uh, for example, in the examination portion, you will tell him, mm, Alex, so now we are starting the examination. We start, for example, by inspection. For inspection, I'm looking at the general look to see if the patient is anxious or not and seeing that she is not anxious right now. So right now, number one, the look, the general appearance. Number two, speak about the eye or the face. There is no exceptional, uh, sorry, uh, after, uh, after the general look, actually speak about the hand. You have to speak about the hand. How to speak about the hand? Simply in the arm or in the upper limbs, I'm checking for the pulse, I'm checking for the temperature, I'm checking for any excessive sweating or any pulmonary arrhythmia. You will comment on all of this to him. And I will, I will feel the pulse for one minute and measure the blood pressure as well. Ideally. After that, simply move to the head. In the head, I would do inspection first. I inspect the eye. After inspecting the eye, I would say I comment that there is no ear. Yes, and the tremors as well. Thank you, Dr. Muniba. 
In the tumors, uh, I would ask the patient to stretch his arms, stretch his arms in front of him. And I'm going to place a paper over it to see if there's tumors or not. After the tumors, I'm going to move to the eye. In the eye examination, simply I would ask the patient to fix his eye, fix his gaze. And I'm going to look, I'm going to comment if there is any tosis or not. There is no tosis, no breathing, no discharge, no redness, no dropping. Now move to the side. I'm going to, from the side, I can comment on the exosomes. And from the back, I can comment on the proptosis. So side exothalamus and the back proptosis. Side exothalamus and the back proptosis. This is also found in the videos, but please, in the video, mind that something is said wrong. From the back, we are commenting on the proptosis. Proptosis, which means that full bulging of the eyeball. Okay? Proptosis. Okay. Um, also, I'm testing the lid leg. Here, the lid leg is important. How to test the lid leg? I will move my finger upward to downward. Only upward to downward in the lid leg to see if the lid is lagging or not. Now, back to the front again. Now, sit, beside, sit before his eyes. Ask him to follow uh, your finger by his eyes, vertical and horizontal nystagmus, and then the edge test to test the ocular, to test the, uh, ocular muscles. Now do the thyroid itself. How to do thyroid inspection and palpation? The inspection of thyroid, I'm commenting on the scars, any mass, any uh, visible pulsation, any swelling, anything. And I'm doing swallowing tests as well and um, blood test or uh, the swallowing, which is the deglutition movement on deglutition. Okay. And uh, drinking water or sipping water and swallowing. Those are the two things. So I would ask the patient to take a sip of water to see if there's any mass movable on uh, drinking. And I'm going also to ask the patient to uh, like uh, try to swallow like this. And then do that from the back as well. But from the back you are going to do, so, so from the front you are doing inspection. What are you doing from the back? From the back you have to do the palpation. The palpation you are placing two hands one hand on the right loop, but before palpation, you have to locate the thyroid. How to locate the thyroid? Very simple. You are going over the cartilage, you know, the cricoid cartilage. You know Adam apple? In the Adam apple, you are just moving three, three points downwards, which are the three cartilages downwards. Three downwards. Now, when you move three points downwards, you will, now you are over the thyroid gland itself. So you place your hand on one side or one loop and feel the other loop. Press and feel and the same on the other loop as well, okay? And you repeat again the glass, the drinking and swallowing, or the tongue protrusion, sorry. Swallowing and tongue protrusion. You will ask him to stick his tongue out for a while and feel any mess if it's protruded or not. And you will ask him to take a sip of water, okay, to see if there's any mess protruding or not. Okay, what is the management? Simply here, thyroid is well controlled. In hyperthyroidism, okay, just to advise here about follow up and about regular compliance with the medication. What are the items of the follow up? Blood tests to see if there is any abnormality, like any agranulous occlusions, which is side effect of carbonazole. Number two, thyroid function test to see how the condition went so far. And number three, level of carbonazole in the blood. Warning signs will be the signs of thyroid scores and signs of atrial fibrillation. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, yes, we need yes. to do the retrosternal extension. You need to check it Excuse and me? the proximal myopathy. I cannot hear you. The, the percussion test, the retrosternal extension. No, no, no. no. You, you, will not, you will not have time. I mean, if you ever have time, listen. If you ever have time in this station, which is a new pattern, you know what to do. You can do, you can. You can try to do that cervical group of lymph nodes. What okay. is cervical group of lymph nodes? Like for example, the um, anterior, uh, like uh, the the deep cervical, the anterior deep cervical, and the posterior deep cervical. Right. Like you know, uh, in front and behind the sternum straight uh, muscle. Yeah. And this is the one thing. Them. Yes, and this one thing, and the circular group as well, submental, submandibular, pre and post auricular, and uh, occipital. So the items here to cover. Okay, the items to cover are number one, general appearance, 
I am writing it to you now. Okay, I have a good idea. Beside the ethics stations, I will send you some notes for the examinations, like items to cover only. Like items, I will not show you any technique. I will just send you items to cover. Technique is very fine. You can find it everywhere. But only the items to cover. General appearance number one. Number two, the hand. Hands. And in the hands, I will write for you some details uh, when I'm providing the papers. And uh, then the eyes. Front, side, hand, back. Sorry, it's front. Okay. Four, I'm going to do an inspection. Sorry, four. Uh, okay, front. Okay, I have to be precise here. I'm going to tell you also number four, this segment. Okay, instead of saying this front, this segment mm -hmm. and um edge this number five i'm going to do inspection including swallowing and tongue protrusion including okay number six palpation including the same following and done then number seven cervical lymph nodes if you ever have time cervical lymph nodes circular and deep okay Now let's move to the visual field. I got the visual field examination, but this session is highly controversial in terms of diagnosis. Okay. Um, very simple, he had an accident, he bumped the car, or he had an accident, like uh, he had a car crash, but very simple one. So he came here, for, his wife got concerned and he came for the eye checkup, he will elaborate the presenting complaint, what are your differentials here? Maybe you will ask about signs of glaucoma. You will ask about signs of SOL. The job is very important to ask. You have to ask about the job as well, because his job is taxi driver. Now do the visual field examination. I'm going to examine your eye, okay? Uh, first of all, you will start by uh, the uh, visual equity. For the visual equity, you will be provided a Snellen chart in the cubicle. You will be provided a Snellen chart in the cubicle. Again, you will be provided a Snellen chart. So please do not assume that the visual equity is normal because I had Snellen chart in the cubicle and I had to do the visual equity. Okay. Um, So uh, after that, you will start the visual equity. You will ask him to fix his head and neck, okay? Cover one eye and read the chart from above to below. While you are looking at the chart as well. But please tell the examiner, I need my six feet distance. He will tell you a stream doctor. Because the patient must sit at six feet distance from the chart. Uh, so he will read the chart from above to below from both eyes. His visual equity is quite normal. This is the visual equity. Ideally, I do color test or color vision using Ishihara test. The examiner will tell you a stream picture. Now do the field of vision. I'm going to examine the field of your vision. For that, I'm going to use this pin. Actually, here you will be using the white head pin. Um, okay, I'm going to use it to do an imaginary X before both of us. I'm going to ask you to cover one of your eyes. So please, whenever you see it, say yes. Do you have any discomfort before we proceed? No, doctor. Okay, thank you. Uh, you will ask him to cover one eye and you'll be covering the same eye or you'll be covering the, the uh, I, mean, I mean, you will ask him to cover one eye and they'll be doing the same. Just say this, I'll be doing the same. 
you also cover the opposite eye. For example, if he covers in the right his right eye, you will be covering his uh, you will be covering your your left eye. So you just cover the corresponding eye to him. So you will be moving the pin from outside to inside. Okay, please do it in imaginary X and do not deviate too much. I mean, do not let your finger approach him more than he should. Just keep the distance between you and him. Uh, he stop. Uh, he can stop you. He can stop you at any point and ask you about glasses. Doctor, I wear glasses. You ask him which type of glass, prescription or reading. He will tell you prescription. For the prescription glasses, he can keep it in the visual field. No problem. Actually, visual field has nothing to do with the eyesight. You can keep the glasses because I'm testing your visual field, not your vision. Okay, so uh, here comes the problem. What if the patient sees the pin only in front of him? Only in front of him. It means definitely. Here in this case, this is tunnel vision. Because his vision is restricted, that he can see the pin only in front of him. What if he can't see the outer or the pin when it comes from the outer sides of both eyes? For example, I'm starting right now. I'm moving, 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 and he can see it. Okay? This is usually we start each eye with the temporal field. Let me demonstrate it to you on camera right now because this is very challenging. I think many people do not know about it. Can you see me right now? So, right now, this is my hand. Okay, let's assume that this is the, the pen. This is the pen. Okay? Okay, now let's assume that, let's assume I'm doing it to myself. Okay? So, I'm testing right now the temporal field of my right eye. I'm testing the temporal field of my right eye. This is my right eye. I'm testing the temporal field. Okay? So, I'm going right now to do that. Okay? See, where did I see it? I saw it here, or simply just, okay, here. This means that it is restricted. The temporal field of my right eye is restricted because I started seeing it very late. I should have seen it from here. See, from here, maybe. But see, where did I see it? I saw it from here. Or even here, sometimes. And now, this is the upper temporal, the upper temporal of my right eye. Now I'm testing the lower temporal of my right eye. So if the temporal is, is impaired, this means that there are two possibilities. Either it is bitemporal because the other temporal as well can be impaired. This is one possibility. And the other possibility is that it is tunnel vision. How to differentiate between them, I will tell you. And the third possibility as well can be the, temp uh, the uh, homonymous hemianopia. So there are three possibilities if the temporal is impaired. Tunnel vision, bitemporal, and homonymous hemianopia. I have three findings. So now suppose that the, upper, the, the temporal of my right eye is impaired. I finish the temporal. I am now testing the nasal of my right eye, right? Okay. If the nasal is fine, this means that it can be two possibilities. If the nasal of the same eye is fine, this means that there can be two possibilities either by temporal hemianopia, or it can be as well um, uh, homonymous hemianopia. So there can be two possibilities, either homonymous hemianopia or by temporal hemianopia. The tunnel vision, all the fields are impaired, so no field will be fine. But here, you know, I found the nasal of my right eye is fine, which excludes tunnel vision. Okay, in the tunnel vision, all the fields are impaired. He just can see only in front of him. Like, see, he can only see this part, like this. You know, like a robot. He can't see, like, by his, beside him, nor he, beside him in this side. He just can see in front of him. So, this is the temporal, uh, this is the right eye. Let's do the left eye. See, now I'm going to test the temporal of my left eye. Of course, I should sit, sit upright. But I'm just doing this to demonstrate to you on the camera. Okay? So, right now, I'm going to do that here and here. Okay, let, now I tested the temporal of my left eye. What if the temporal of my left eye is impaired as well? 
So now I have impaired temporal of right eye and impaired temporal of left eye. What is the finding here, Dr. Muriwa? Um, if the temporals of both eyes are affected, then it's bi-temporal hemianopia. Okay, perfect. So Dr. Elvira, Dr. Elvira, Dr. Elvira? Yes. Okay, so Dr. Elvira, tell me, what if, uh, you know, uh, my, my temper of my right eye is impaired, you know? But the problem is yes. that, you know, when you, uh, when you check the nasal of my left eye, sorry, uh, when you check the temper of my left eye, the temper of my left eye is fine. So the temper of my right eye is impaired, but the temper of my left eye is fine. What do you suggest here? Or what can you expect? I forgot the name. No, just tell me. What can you expect? So one side is impaired, the second one is working. Yeah, in the temporal. So it means that one side is affected. I mean, I don't know how to say that. But we didn't do the, na the nasal yet. We didn't do the nasal of the left side. I mean, in the right eye, only the temporal is affected. In the right eye, only the temporal is affected. But in the left eye, yes. I just did the temporal and it was fine. So now so I we have, have to complete it. Yes, exactly. And what do you expect? So it would be fine. No, if the nasal is impaired. So I now I have uh, impaired temporal in the right side. I have impaired temporal on right side. And so you will nasal. have uh, impaired in the nasal one in the left one. Yeah, I will have impaired one, uh, impaired nasal in the left one. I mean, it's not a rule, but I mean just assume that there is an impairment in the right temporal and in the left nasal. Yes. What What's the diagnosis here? Um, hemi, hemi something. Okay, homonymous hemi anopia. Yes, yeah, homonymous. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, which, how can I call it? Which side? Which side homonymous hemi anopia? Right. Why? Because it was affected the right side. Okay. I have impaired right temporal and impaired the left nasal. Impaired right temporal and impaired left nasal. I'm going to kill you right now. Impaired right temporal and impaired left nasal. So uh, then that means that left one. No, I'm just confusing you. Okay, just close. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Listen, guys. Homonymous hemi anopia. Homonymous hemi anopia always follow the temporal side. Homonymous hemi anopia always follows the temporal side. For example, if I'm having impaired right temporal and impaired left nasal. This means that I'm having right homonymous hemi anopia. So that was I, I told you. No, you said because he has impairment on the right side. No, it's not like this. It just, it follows the temporal side. I got it here. Mm -hmm. okay. So and but I, if that would be vice versa, then it would be right one. The if left. it was what? If it would be vice versa. Yeah. Then it would be affected the left one. Yes, exactly. That's right one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is what you can do right now. Is that you see or you see which temporal side is impaired. You know, usually from the first temporal uh, side, you will just you will get to know the diagnosis. Because the diagnosis here is crucial in uh, the station to pass. If you give wrong diagnosis, you will not pass the station. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you. I got uh, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let me demonstrate you simply why we why we say it follows the right side. You see, for example, right now I I'm 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 now I cannot see the temporal side of my right eye, which means that I can't see the outside by my right eye, and I can't see the nasal side the nasal side of my left eye. So I can't see this side by my left eye. So see, I have impairment in this side. This side, we call right to homonymous hemi anopia, which means that half field of vision is lost. Full half field mm -hmm. of vision is lost. And usually it is on the right side because it follows the temporal. Okay. 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 Um, so, um, doctor, uh, I will tell the patients that you're having condition I call, for example, tunnel vision. This is a condition in which your vision is limited or restricted that you can only see in front of your eyes. Why did I have it? It has many reasons. However, we need to refer you to specialists to perform further tests for you. Which test, doctor? 
here you will say that we need to do further scans to you, like CT or MRI scan, and further eye test or vision test as well. Could it be cancer? May I know why you think so? Okay, now actually cancer could be a possibility, but in the tunnel vision station or in the tunnel vision cases, it can be glaucoma as well, right? So we just say that cancer could be a possibility. However, there are some other causes as well like glaucoma or such things for that we need to run further investigations as I told you. Uh, just say that there could be a possibility because there are many reasons for that. Always learn the reasons for each one. Don't you write about driving. Here is the core of the station. Driving, you should inform the DBLA. What will the DBLA do? They will test his vision. Um, under the uh, by the or by the knowledge or by uh, under the commitment of the optometrist or the DBLA, the optometrist will check his vision or do some tests to him to see if he can comply with the driving rules or not. And he will send the result to the medical officer of the DBLA. So the optometrist will test him, and he will send to the medical officer. The decision will be made to uh, in one or two months. Okay, doctor, but what will happen, doctor? You will decide in that. Doctor, will they take that? I don't want to go there. So again, if he doesn't want to go there, tell him that this is for you, better to save your life. And as well, I'm sure you agree with me, this can be risky to you and to the public because this can put you under the risk of accident. Remember, like any other station, in which I should encourage the patient to involve the delay. Okay. One more session is that the cranial nerve examination. In the cranial nerve examination, simply, he is coming with CIA and you have to examine the cranial nerves. Um, actually, you'll find all the examinations are normal because he was having TIA and the TIA usually it's resolved within a few minutes. Okay, which cranial nerve examination to do? You will start with the optic nerve. Why optic? Because the task tells you that the olfactory is normal. So start with the optic. Uh, you can also actually, actually here you can test the visual acuity. You can test the visual field, but the examiner will ask you to step to uh, skip many steps. They need you to do basically the ocular movements, including the nystagmus. Uh, test okay, uh, and the edge test as well. We need you to do the uh, three, four, and six, and we may need you to do the facial or the trigeminal. So, three, four, six, which are the ocular movements, and very important also, you can uh, perform the facial or the trigeminal. She will ask you, the examiner will guide you. For example, whenever you're performing any test, she will tell you normal, look, normal, normal, move to the next look. Okay, so uh, very simply, uh, I will send you a video for it to follow it. It's very simple, but just make sure that you need only to follow two or three nerves. You do not aim at all the nerve examination, and most probably it will be the facial or trigeminal beside the three, four, or six. Three, four, six are the visual movement or the ocular movements, right? Very simple and easy station. And the management, you will tell him that he is having condition we call TIA. This causes the TIA temporary disruption in the blood flow to the brain. Okay, why did it happen? You will get it from the task. The blood pressure was high. BMI is high. I mean, you will pick up the relevant finding. What can I do? Yeah. Is there something? Uh, yes, say, Dr. Bear, yes, say. Please, please, I think, um, would you please send that list with the necessary, the most necessary things to join the station? Because I will be, you know me, I will be all over the station. Which station? The, like you said the pre, um, earlier that you will send um, just the list with the most necessary things yeah, to join yeah, the yeah, yeah. station. In each, in the combined stations, actually. I, yes, I, please. Yeah. I really because you know me, I will be all over the cubicle and... I think, I think, no, no, I think really, all right, this is even more important than the other things because many people still do not know how to perform the examination or the combined station. Thank you very much. No, no worries. This is very important. You're right. 
Yeah, because I, I see or I, what I could see that the people are uh, actually they are following they are following the notes blindly. Wait, guys, wait a minute. So, um, yeah, yeah, uh, you will not cover the glossopharyngeal and hypoglossopharyngeal me. Okay, just know them. Just know how to test them. Very simple. But you will not cover them. You will barely reach the fish here. Many things, yeah, there are many things written in the script, Dr. Rivera. Many things. Uh, many steps and many things. I just need to be concise and focused because you will never have time to cover all of them. Okay, uh, one more station is the spacer, the spacer technique and the spacer, the spacer station. In this station, simply, you will find a child who's not, his, whose asthma is not well controlled. And if the asthma is not well controlled, there can be many reasons. Number one, frequent infection, no. Number two, inhaler technique, no. He's taking the inhaler regularly. Number three, how are you giving the inhaler to him via space reductor? Do you know how to use it or have you been told how to use it? She will tell you, doctor, actually no. I have problem using it. So now you explain to her how to use it. Very simple. Number one, she has to make sure that there is no blockage. How? By simply looking, if there is any foreign body or if there is any material, this means that it is blocked. As long as it's clear, this means that I mean the route or the pathway is clear, this means that everything is fine. What's next? After that, you are going to ask her to make a tight seal around his mouth with a spacer. First of all, definitely you have to pick up the right spacer from the table because you'll be having many colors. Pick up the right color, which could be the yellow one, especially after uh, two years old, you have to pick it up. And after that, you will explain to him, put a tight seal around the mouth. How to make sure that there is a tight seal, doctor? Very simple. Just let him take a take few breaths, up to five or six breaths. I mean, general breaths, I mean, before even giving the inhaler. Let him take a few breaths. If you notice the valve, you know the valve? The valve is something which is like, Something like put uh, just above the mouthpiece, or above the mouth port. Above, sorry, above the mask, above the mask port. You will notice it when you found it. I will send you a video as well to it for the spacer. It's very simple. Um, okay, uh, listen, guys. Uh, for the videos, for the people who are confused about these things, my study uh, was mainly through the videos of uh, Dr. Anchor and uh, from um, some notes from the academy, uh, especially from Dr. Elmira. Um, but for the videos, you have to stick to Aspire videos. And uh, I used to watch Geeky Medics and some other medics as well, medics videos. But do not confuse yourself too much. Just pick them up in the things that you do not know or you are not sure about. Anyway, you will explain to her that she should take, make a, a tight seal, observe the movement of the valve, as long as the valve is moving, this means that tight seal has been made. So what's next? Now place the inhaler in the inhaler port. Okay, after, of course, after checking the inhaler, place the inhaler in the inhaler port. Okay, uh, press the cancer, press the cancer of the inhaler. Let your baby take five breaths. After, after, the, after one press, after one press or after one puff, let the baby take a few breaths. And as long as the valve is moving, this means that he is inhaling the inhaler deeply or properly. Okay. 
What's next? You will ask here a very important thing. You'll ask you always to observe uh, if there is, uh, I mean, do not, regarding the washing. Regarding the washing, just, you know, soak it in uh, lukewarm or uh, soapy water. Lukewarm, soapy water. Just soak it. And then let it air dry. Do not scrub it with anything. Why do not scrubbing? Because scrubbing actually will cause some scratch in the side of the wall, which can interfere with the, uh, I mean, in which some particles or some inhaler particles can stick to. So please do not scratch it. And what's next? You have to change it maybe every six months, up to one year. Okay, doctor, he makes noises and he is not cooperative with me. Now you can give her some advice as how to make him cooperative and like, I mean how to make him like enjoying the thing because actually this can be challenging sometimes. How to make that or how to do that? Okay, simply play with, with the spacer before giving it to him so that he gets used to it. Uh, pick him up in the free time, not in a time when he's sleeping or in a time when he's stressed or watching something he's interested in. Number three, please try to encourage him. How to encourage him? By placing the spacer over his mouth, for example, for a few minutes, like maybe and count one to 10, so that he gets used, he gets used to the time in which the spacer should be placed on his face. If you count from one to 10 each time, he will, he will get used to that. Sometimes if he is like trying to push the spacer with one hand, try to pull his hands away gently. Pull it gently, for example, pull it away gently from the way so that it does not interfere with you giving him the spacer. You can also put him on your arms like maybe 45 degrees while giving it to him, no problem. Um, do not give it to him in a time he is crying or in a time that he is unlikely to be benefiting from it. Okay, this is a patient so far with the speech. It can finish in four or five minutes. But there are two common mistakes that you pick up the wrong color. Okay, and uh, maybe I, 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 I don't, I, I'm not sure about that, but some doctors can explain it on themselves. Uh, or some doctors can let the patient demonstrate it on themselves. I told you many times anything which can be done by mouth is always change the mouthpiece or change the space itself. Ask for another one. Let the examiner tell you assume that, but just ask for other one if you cannot change the mouthpiece. So please do that. We are marking you in the hygiene as well as medicine. Okay, so, um, and by the way, in any station, in which, uh, remember by the way, the diabetic and alcoholic food stations and, uh, and with lash as well. Sometimes you can use the cotton waste and the sharps, uh, the, 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 the pin, I mean the pin to test the pain sensation. The sharp needle and the cotton waste. Please, when you finish the cotton waste and when you finish the needle, throw them through them to the, uh, the needle of course will be thrown to the sharp bin and the cotton waste will be thrown to the clinical waste. Even in diabetic and alcoholic food, you have to throw them, you have to throw everything. Do not leave anything on the table. Do not ever leave any things on the table. Always throw anything you finish in the clinical waste. Even if you have no time, throw it when you are leaving the cubicle. Do anything, do not leave it on the table. This is an, we consider it as an attitude. This means that, for example, if you are likely to keep the things on the table right now, when you start working on NHS, you can still keep them there on the table. Okay, so always do that. One station as well is the reactive arthritis. Reactive arthritis is a very long station, though uh, luckily, actually, he, will, he may not let you complete the examination. Why? Because actually, uh, here in this patient, he's coming for a pain in the joint, mainly the knee joint and the ankle. And he is 
um, he was having diarrhea two weeks ago. So for the pain in the knee joint, I'm going to ask about any redness or swelling as well. You know, signs of uh, arthritis. I'm going to rule out rheumatoid arthritis by any problem, any other problem in anywhere in the body, uh, any other joint involved other than that. I'm going to rule out rheumatoid arthritis and trauma and septic arthritis or osteoarthritis. Too. So ask about fever, no. Any redness or swelling? Sometimes or most of the times, no. Uh, any trauma? No. What are the associating symptoms here in the active arthritis apart from the arthritis? The eye problem and the urinary problem. You know, remember, can't see, can't pee, can't climb the tree. Can't see, can't pee, can't climb the tree. Can't climb the tree is a joint problem. Can't see is the eye problem. I'm going to ask about any uh, any discharge from the from the eye, any redness or swelling in the eye. What about in the revision? What about can't pee? I'm going to ask any redness or swelling in the private part. Any discharge from the front passage? Just two or three questions, very simple. And can't have a cup of tea as well. But I'm not sure if it affects really the, um, the you mean the hand, uh, the ability, his ability to, to hold something? Dr. Yasmin, you are asking, or you mean about his ability to hold objects? Oral also, yeah, 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 oral also. Okay, thank you for this note. Um, okay, next uh, is that uh, you are going to ask the recent health, you will find history of diarrhea. He was having diarrhea two weeks back whenever uh, he was in Germany. And it's resolved. Usually active arthritis happens after minor illness, if you know. Okay. Okay, what's next? Now, move to the lifestyle. Smoking, alcohol, irrelevant. The most important thing here is sexual history. So I know from diarrhea and I know that there could be two precipitating things, diarrhea and STI. What is in the STI? He had unprotected sex recently. This is another triggering factor. Move to the examination itself, the knee examination. Sorry, in the examination, I will start with the eye examination. I need to comment and it's a charge in redness or swelling in the eye. Number two, I'm doing the knee examination. For the knee examination, I will cover these items. Number one, I will do inspection. In the inspection, I'm looking for DRSSW. Deformity, redness, swelling, scar and wasting deformity redness scar swelling and wasting any of these things in the knee from the front from the side and from the back but as at the back i'm looking for sorry in the back like in the popliteal fossa popliteal fossa i am looking for bigger cysts this is inspection. Number two, the gait. I'm going to ask him to take some few steps and I will comment the gait is normal, smooth gait. Number three as well. I am going right now to do the palpation. For the palpation, I have to concentrate more on the movement, like uh, uh, just active movement are really enough. To ask him just to flex his knee and uh, straighten it. Bend the knee and straighten it. Bend the knee and straighten it. Just flexion and extension. Very enough. Active movement plus palpation. Plus three, tenderness. How to test for tenderness here? Very simple. You are testing the medial and lateral joint, the medial and lateral border of the patella. Medial and lateral border of the patella. 
one at one time because it's tenderness. So you just, you know, move your finger over it, medial, number one medial, and after finishing the medial, move the, do the lateral. After doing the patella, you are doing the medial and lateral joint lines, which are the medial border of the joint, knee joint, and the medial, sorry, the medial line of the knee joint and the medial or the lateral line of the knee joint. After finishing the two things, you are doing the popliteal fossa. Just roll your finger inside the popliteal fossa. The problem or the, the good news is that it will give you tenderness over the patella. I mean, the beginning of the exam, in the beginning of the palpation, it will give you tenderness. Would you like me to proceed? No. So this is much time saving. I'm speaking about what I have heard. But at any time, he can change his mind. So please be prepared to do the next step, which is a, uh, which is a effusion, the effusion test, the sweep test, effusion including the sweep test only. Sweep test. Number five, sweep test simply are we are melting fluid from the medial side and displacing it by our hands from the lateral side. Like you are milking a real fluid, milk through the medial and this place on the lateral. Milk on the medial, this place on the lateral. Okay. Number five, if you have time, you can do the ankle palpation. Just move your hands or squeeze the ankle gently. Squeeze the ankle gently while looking at his face. You, you will stop usually at the palpation. I mean, you will finish number three and your examination will be done. Okay, you're having condition we call reactive arthritis. What is this? Inflammation and swelling in the joints, mainly the knee joint in the body, which usually happens after certain infection. You told me that you had diarrhea a few weeks back. This is the reason. Why? Because the bug mainly traveled from the, the bowel or from the GIT to the joint space which causes this inflammatory action. But sometimes it can be due to autoimmune. I mean, this infection, the, the bug, can trigger our immune response. You know, we will, we will explain the autoimmune theory. What are you going to do for me? Now we need to, number one, rule other conditions. What are other conditions like autoimmune problems, like rheumatoid arthritis, using the HALA antigen and anti-CCP antibodies? So we are just going to test some certain substance in your blood called antibodies to rule out other conditions. We need as well to do some uh, routine blood tests, all the routine bloods. So how to rule out other conditions? Routine bloods, this number one. Number two, antibodies. Number three, x-ray on the affected joint, on P. Then, this is the first step, rule out other conditions. Second step is a treatment. Which treatment? I'm going to give him painkillers, simple painkillers here. I'm going to give him as well some advice, some uh, movement advice. Like maybe try to take enough first, try some ice compressions, try to like be regularly active, like from time to time, simple activity, okay? And this usually will resolve on its own after two weeks. However, if this pain is not getting better, we can also refer you to a physiotherapist to guide you about the movement. And if it's not getting better, ultimately we can do some further tests for you. So it is self-limiting. And we can refer him to physiotherapist to guide him about movement. Okay? So this is the station so far. Like any station, you, you know, the lifestyle advice are typically like the rheumatoid arthritis. Be active as much as possible. Try some ice compressions in the affected joint from time to time. Uh, try to have enough rest as well. Uh, try not to do or not to overburden the affected joint by doing many exercises. Like similar and simple advice. Okay, this is a station so far of the reactive arthritis. We are left only with one station, which is the cervical smear. Cervical smear, she is coming to the appointment. Okay, which appointment here? She's coming for cervical screening appointment. 
So you will simply, when someone is coming for cervical screening, I have to rule out STIs and I have to rule out pregnancy as well. So just ask her about pregnancy. No, she is not pregnant. And when was the last menstrual period and by any chance could you be pregnant? No. Do you have any symptoms like what? Any discharge, any swelling in your private part? No. What, what else we ask in screening? So number one, pregnancy. Number two, STI. Number three, any cancer, any possibility of cancer, like weight loss. Um, uh, do you have any shortness of uh, any lumps in anywhere in your body? Any family history of cancer? No. Okay. Now move to the examination portion. Why? Because actually this is, station, this is an appointment. In any appointment, guys, we can do the examination before taking history. Okay, you can build the report by asking two or three questions of history in the beginning, and then move to the examination. But please do not spend more than two minutes in the history here. Two minutes in the history and then move to the procedure. Why? Why, I will tell you why. Because the procedure can take you a little bit longer, so you will be in trouble. Okay, now you will insert, you will gather your equipment. Please make sure that you will gather the light source. I will send you a Geeky Medics video. I sent it to you, by the way, I remember. The cervical smear on the WhatsApp group. I sent it to you. Please follow this video and make sure that you always pick up the, the, the light source. Pick up the light source, very important. If you do not pick up the light source, you will fail it. So pick the light source, it will be by your side or ask the examiner for it. Okay, this is one thing. And the other thing as well is that please when you are taking the, using the cervical brush, do not let the brush touch the side of the speculum. Do not let the brush touch the speculum. If it touches the speculum, this means that you mix it, the speculum with the cervical cells. So please make sure that the brush, you will rotate it inside, okay? You will rotate it inside and then take it peacefully. Take it gently and peacefully. After that, you will ask, you will give her some, you will withdraw the speculum. Give her some wipes to clean herself and look at the speculum first if you see any charge or bleeding or any anything. Give her some wipes to clean herself or sometimes the examiner will ask you to do it on your own. And then cover here, cover the mannequin. Move to the patient, she will ask you two or three questions. Where can I do this? You will ask her to the GP surgery and you will give the result in the GP surgery. How long it takes the result? Two weeks to take the result. Why she will not ask you too much? Because she has the cervical, this is her second cervical appointment, or cervical screen appointment. Okay, what is the importance of cervical screening, doctor? You can tell her that it's very important to detect any changes which can happen, and this way you can catch anything before it happens. Okay, this is the station. Um, Dr. Ahmad? Yes? Uh, my friend, Dr. Ipsita, you also know her. Uh, she got the, uh, like in the history, like about, um, uh, how about uh, your last PEP test and their result? She said, uh, I didn't come for last couple of years. So should we address this sentence by giving the importance of coming regularly and having PEP tests done? And who says the cervical screening is done every, every year? Mm -hmm. Cervical screening is done every five years up till, mm -hmm. to, up till 50 years old. And when you are mm -hmm. 50 years after that, it can be done every three years. So every five years under 50. Okay. But after 50, you are going to do it uh, every three years. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Like for six years, some, some years. something something she gave like in six years, and Doctor Isita said that I missed the point that it should be addressed. If someone is missing it uh, within the screening period, even though it was last one was normal, yeah. then you need to say it, the importance of when to come. Just like you said, the range, right? Yeah, you have to emphasize on the importance, actually. Emphasize that point, yeah. I, I believe that point was bring up because of some something they want to listen from us. Yeah. 
So please uh, do this procedure in, in three minutes. Uh, the, pro the problem is that some people can miss it. Why? Because you can touch the speculum. If you touch the speculum, by the way, you missed the sample. Uh, so you can redo it again. No problem. One important thing here to do is that after taking the sample with the brush, you will be having a pot beside you. In this pot, you will just, you know, you will discard the end of the brush. You know, the brush is, is having two, two parts. Uh, you can discard the end of the brush in the pot. Discard it. This is what we call a uh, sure path. Sure path, the put is called sure path. You will discard it. There is some other put, which I don't remember its exact name. But in the other put, I mean sure path, you will just discard the brush. But in the other put, in the other naming, you will need to dip the brush for 10 times. One, two, three, four, ten prep, yes, exactly. So you will have to do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you will close the put and you will discard the whole brush. So here you will discard the whole brush in the clinical waste. But in the previous one or the short path, you will discard the, the brush, the, the tip of the brush in the put and the other portion of the brush in the clinical waste. Any further question, guys? Anyone needs anything to ask about anything? Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I have a doubt. Uh, so in this, uh, in the teaching station, so where we are getting marks for the teaching, like is it in the data gathering or in the management part? In the data gathering, you are not listen. In the teaching station, simply you have to ask three questions on entering the station. You have to ask your colleague, basically it's your colleague, okay? Let's assume that it's your colleague, not, uh, not uh, the nurse. So mm -hmm. your colleague, you, how you will teach him? How are you today? You know, you can build a good report with them. How are you today? How is your round going? Or how is your job going today? Or how is your day in general? How is your patience? How is your study going? Uh, I'm fine, doctor, with everything, but I just was told that you're going to teach me this examination. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to teach you everything right now from the scratch. So ask him right now, uh, do you have any idea about it? He will tell you, uh, or how much do you know about it? He will tell you, doctor, I just know that it's done. For example, let's assume you're doing the knee examination. Yes, um, I got this patient in the exam and I got 303. Like uh, for the management, I got zero. So I want to know like what is the management and the examination? Okay. Like teaching station. Okay. Let me demonstrate it to you. Mm -hmm. I got 11 in it, by the way. And I guess Dr. Manu got 11 in it as well. As well. Um, um, so let me tell you one thing. I entered, he was David. I remember this medical student. Yes. And um, I'm fine, doctor. I just need you to teach the knee. Okay, that's fine. That's great. I'm going to teach it to you. So uh, tell me about our patient, please, first. He will tell you that the patient was having knee pain and I examined him today, but I could not perform it well. No worries. I'm going to teach you right now. And you can. And uh, later on, after you finish, uh, but not today, do, do not say after you finish because you did not, you, you did not take the consent uh, from the patient to ask someone else to examine him. So you will say differently, that's, that will be great. I'm going to teach it to you today with pleasure. With pleasure. Let's, let's move to our patient, David. Okay. Um, how are you? I'm Dr. XX. Now you're introducing yourself to the patient. Okay. I'm Dr. XX, one of the junior doctors here. Um, how are you today? I'm fine, doctor. I was told that you have been having knee pain, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, right, doctor. And how are you feeling right now? I'm absolutely fine. Well, that's great. For that, I'm now uh, going to examine your knee. I'm going to demonstrate it to my friend, uh, to my colleague, sorry, David. Uh, he is going to observe us. I may ask you to do some movements and to, to stand up. Uh, so please, if you have any pain at any point, please do let me know. Will that be okay? Okay, doctor, thank you. Shall we start? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now we will ask David or will tell David, usually we start our examination by inspection, right? He will tell you, right. So I'm going to ask our patient to stand up. Uh, we start with inspection, right, David? Right. Okay. Now move to the patient, ask the patient to stand up. Are you able to stand up? That's the beginning. Yes, I'm able to stand up. Okay, thank you. I will be thankful if you stand up for me. Okay. So 
stand up and you are going to examine inspection from above, from, from front and side and the back, as I wrote a few minutes ago. I will comment on each of them. And what did I used to do? I used to always involve David. I used to tell David, David, for example, can you see there is no scar here, there is no mess, no, no swelling, no muscle wasting, and from the side as well. But David, you know, we should do on both sides. But here we are going to do the affected knee just for the time being. He told me, yes, okay, doctor. Then, this is number one. Number two, I'm going to ask the bit. Well, one mistake many people make is that they verbalize everything beforehand. For example, they tell David, the student, that David, now we need to assess uh, the gait. So I'm going to ask the patient to run a few steps or to walk a few steps for me, David. Don't do this. Just say, now we, we shall assess the gait. So move to the patient. Can you walk for a few steps for me, please? I'm going to support you. So do not waste your time by giving the full explanation to David. David is observing you. Just explain why you are looking for the things. How, again, let's, ask, let's assess his gait right now, David. Now move to the patient. Um, okay, Mr. X, for example, can you take a few steps from me? I'm here to support you. While the patient is walking, you will tell David, see David, I can see that the patient's gait is smooth and he has no abnormality in the gait. So our patient's gait is very fine here. Right? Right, Dr. All right. So after the gait now, I'm going to do special tests of the knee, or the special things of the knee. What are special things? We are start number one by the palpation, uh, by the tenderness, uh, sorry, temperature, number one. Number two, that tenderness, and number three, the effusion test. The effusion test is very important, and the special test. Listen. What I have heard or what I have heard from the people is that you can get zero in the management if you did not reach the official test. Have you done the official test, Dr. Manisha? Uh, yes, I have reached till the special test. Uh, I think I only did one. Then my time Which was one? finished. I, I don't remember. Uh, I think I did for the collateral. Are you sure you did it right? I think so, yeah. But I only did one test and then like I didn't get time. No, no, it's fine because I did one as well. I was doing all the things I was teaching David, like now we have to check the day, the gate, we have to do like this. Then I am talking to the patient. So as you said, it was taking a lot of time. Yeah, it will confuse you and confuse David. Mm -hmm. But no, actually I, I also reached one test only because one, te one test or two tests are very fine. I got 11. I think if I did another test, I would get 12. But here, it's not about the test. It's about maybe he did not um, care for the patient's pain. He did not excuse him before going for any test. What I noticed is that in this stage, what, no one of my friends, he got this patient before. And he was asked by David, Doctor, what is the most important thing in this examination? And my friend told him, uh, he, he didn't know, of course, what to say. He told them, of course, the most important thing is to check the patient's comfort after each step because he, most of the times our patients are having knee pain. And he got 12. And that's what I did, by the way. I had to check his comfort each and every time. And by the way, one important thing in teaching is patience. You are marked in the management if you did not check your colleague understanding. You have to check his understanding. Are you following me? Is that all right? Do you have any questions so far? This will take you five seconds each time. I think I did that, but I, I was thinking is the teaching comes in the management part, like the marks comes in the management, how they divide the marking? Actually, the history here could be the report and gaining data about or gathering data about the patient himself. Interpersonals are your relation or how you, um, how you interpret your colleague. Like for example, how to address his concern from time to time during the station. And how you are acting with the patient, of course. How you are very compassionate, like, be the patient. You are teaching on a patient. You have to be very careful. This is the second thing. And third thing is the management here. I told you, the management is here in this station, special test, besides addressing your colleague concern. Why special test? Because definitely most of the patients are having either ligamentous injury or a meniscal injury. So here, you have to do that. Uh, I told you I got 11 in it without doing maintenance. I did only one test and it was a, 
anterior and posterior drawer. And I even, yeah. yeah, tell me. And did you like um, uh, the, anything about the management of like ligament thing or anything? Because my patient was, the, he doesn't have any pain. And it was, I think it was written in the question that the condition is managed or something. Yeah, yeah. So, he was having pain before. He was having pain before. He just had pain before, long before. Okay, but so do we need to talk about any pain, like anything for the, like maybe yeah. lifestyle? No, no, no. Do, do not give like lifestyle advice. No. Just ask him, do you have anything right now? Any problem? Would it be okay? Just excuse him that you're going to teach on him. Okay? Okay. Hmm. I think you're this is... What? No, no, seriously, yeah. Um, I uh, um, had this um, teaching um, how to do cervical, uh, take the, the sample of a student. And I'm sure I was quite rubbish in all the examination stations, but to my huge surprise, I scored quite high. And there I actually um, said to him, it's a very intimate procedure. We tr try to be as gentle as possible yes. with the woman and try to cover her. And if she is not comfortable, keep asking her if she is comfortable or not, and sort of these things. But I wasn't really, I'm not sure that I was very good, good with the techniques or whatever. And in the end, I asked him, um, was I clear enough? If you have any question, you can come back or, and we can go all over it yeah. again. I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's very simple. You have to change the understanding from time. You have, you, by the way, you have not to be fast. Okay, so um, I know today's session was quite fast, not so informative, but we're just pointing over the, detail, the single thing. You can actually, the examination need to be practiced on live. You need to practice them in one day, but please practice them with the whole station. I mean, do not practice the examination only. Practice the whole station as one piece to manage your time um, and to put yourself under the stress of the exam condition. Um, examination stations are, are very, I mean, confusing to some, but believe me, their pass marks are good. You can pass any of them. So, any further question? Yeah. Um, when are we going to have a cinema station? Tomorrow Man, morning? Most probably it will be the day after tomorrow. I'm sorry, I had to postpone it one day. Okay. On Sunday, inshallah. I'll post the time on the group. Okay. I can get just a um, recording for it. Excuse me? I can get a recording for it because I have to start going to the academy. I can't hear you. I said I can get a recordings. The recordings. Yeah. You didn't get them yet? Yes, yeah. I mean the recording of the session because there you would be, you said there would be some sort of interaction. Yeah, you mean you mean the, the examination station or the sim? No, 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 no. The, the sim man, which, oh, which is coming. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but please do not share them with anyone. You guys do not share no, them. No, 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 no. Especially the SMM, because the people, you know, the many people are lacking SMM. Okay, any further things, guys? Okay, thank you all for listening for today. Today, officially, was the last day of our sessions. After a long run, long trip. I wish all of you best luck. Inshallah, the Sunday session will be quick practice for some men just to see how to practice it and know how to practice it. And inshallah, inshallah, all the best for all of you. Uh, wish you all the best in your exams and in the study as well. Please practice in the right way. You will be joining me for one hour, inshallah. Everyone will, um, will be, uh, I mean, it will be decided for everyone which hour. And please spare at least two or three days in your academies to 
practice the examinations and the mannequins.